Okay, I don't see it's anyone. It's correct. It's correct. It's okay. correct. Okay. Yes, but thank you so much. I, I can see you, I can hear you, and I can see your presentation in full screen mode. Don't worry about that. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so, uh, okay, it's time. Welcome, everybody, to this um, final day of the conference. Uh, we are in the uh, automatic control session number three. And uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Efren Mesura Montes from Artificial Intelligence Research Institute, uh, Universidad Veracruzana in Mexico. Um, I'm very glad to chair this session. And uh, we have uh, uh, a set of very good and interesting presentations. So I, I, I hope you enjoy uh, this uh, morning in our case, maybe afternoon in other places in the world, uh, of this uh, opportunity to share uh, research works. So uh, let's start with the first presentation, which will be presented by Chadi Riman. Uh, and the title of the talk is A Priority Based Modified A uh, Star Path Planning Algorithm for Multi Mobile Robot Navigation. Uh, Chadi, you have 15 minutes. I will let you know once you have two minutes left. And after that, we, you will be able to answer some questions. Okay? Okay. Okay, thank you go so ahead. Much. Okay, thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Or good afternoon for those who are have the same timing like uh, I do. I am from Kuwait. Uh, my name is Shadi Riman, and uh, I have a co-writer, Pierre uh, Abishal. And the name of the presentation, a priority-based modified A-star planning algorithm for multi-mobile robot navigation. So I will start by the outline. We have introduction, problem statement, model requirement, proposed priority-based path planning with collision-free algorithm. We have application to automated storage system and uh, conclusion and future work. So um, I will start this, uh, the work that we did is more or less directed to automated storage and retrieval system that are now so famous in many companies, super companies, Amazon and others. And they are very advanced uh, and used in industries. And uh, they use robots. And these robots, they uh, navigate and they take stuff and they uh, take them and uh, put them back. And uh, also, the in this cases, shortest path problems are considered a major topic uh, in computer science in general. Right? And this paper, I'm uh, Tackling this problem and specifically for these automated uh, storage and retrieval system, and we uh, we started work before with a previous paper, and then we added in this paper in this work priority uh, to a collision-free path planning. Uh, when I say priority, I mean there are multi-mobile robots around in the system, and we want to have one which has the priority over the other robot. Uh, our priority plan path planning algorithm is an improvement of the original A star heuristic algorithm, which is the basis of our algorithm. We started with A star heuristic and then we you know moved on and we added uh, a few things. And at this latest work, we added priority to the system. So, <clears throat> so model requirement first, uh, what's the model requirement of solving path planning? So usually we consider the um, simplest issue of having n directed connected graph g which has v e and l v set of nodes e the set of edges that connect the nodes and l is just the effective length between any uh, two uh, nodes now the path width between two nodes can only accommodate one mobile robot at a time we assume that it's not possible to have in one, uh, two between two neighbors, more than one robot. So either there's one or not. The running speed assumed it in this uh, um, system to be constant and the same for all mobile robots under normal operation condition. Uh, we chose just one, one more, more mobile robot with priority in order to reach a goal before the others. So if uh, there is a uh, clash or uh, intersection and then this priority robot will move and the others will wait. Um, we assume that also there is a mobile direct direction 
So the direction uh, the robot has to move uh, uh, and turn and then go in another direction. And then there's at the static point, there's an initial direction. So the proposed algorithm consists of two main phases. Though namely, we have the modified Dijkstra style algorithm and the edge table or the heuristic uh, table calculation algorithm. So usually, when I decide the minimum path between A and B uh, points, let's say, so f of n is actually the actual past uh, distance so far, plus an approximation or a heuristic uh, function that says approximates what's the difference distance to reach the goal. So our modified Dijkstra algorithm, a star algorithm, will take into consideration the dynamic obstacle avoidance and how did we do that actually? Because you know when you decide on a uh, certain path, uh, usually it's static more or less. And if in case something is moving, then this is what we did. We did that in every step we recalculate the heuristic function so that we uh, we know if um, a mobile another obstacle moved and then the uh, the grid changed and then we have um, uh, something that is you know different. Um, we propose two ways to calculate this edge table h1 and h2. h1 is just approximate distance from goal to other no states. We start from the goal and we move one step until we reach the uh, the uh, start and H2 actually will take something into consideration because you know we take into consideration the turning because you need one step to turn in the case you're going to the right and you want to turn up then you need one step to do the turning so the H2 will take into consideration this uh, turning of course they are both approximations of the distance uh, from the um, from the uh, from the goal to all other points um, now, uh, we added recently the priority, the priority <clears throat> so that one robot can have a priority with respect to all the others. And we suggest also two ways, uh, two uh, methods, A1, A2, A2 namely A1, A2. Uh, A1 actually will check the next node for each non-priority robot and compare it with the next two nodes of the priority uh, robot path. If there is an intersection, the non-priority node the robot, sorry, will not move, will wait. So every one move for non-priority robot, the next move is compared for the next two moves of the uh, priority robot. Now, A2 um, is a little bit different. Actually, it's comparing uh, next two nodes for the non-priority robot and comparing with the next node of the priority robot. Uh, so it's doing the opposite. If there is an intersection, again, the non-priority robot will uh, not move. <clears throat> uh, so we did some application. We tried the simulation. So to verify the proposed algorithm, we did some several simulations for a range of scenarios for automated storage. So for example, uh, scenario one, we had the uh, moving obstacle. Um, one moving obstacle scenario. So uh, if you look um, uh, the uh, the black uh, dots, so 4 to 21, this is a moving obstacle that's moving from, uh, as you see, this is the grid, I didn't explain it. So a basic grid containing 40 blocks, 40 nodes, uh, numbered from 1 to 40. So uh, we can assume, let's say, the robot is moving from uh, point uh, node 17 to 36. And uh, you see the black uh, line is showing a uh, obstacle moving from node 4 to node 21. Uh, so in this uh, scenario, if we apply non-priority, so the, uh, the robot moving from block 4 to block 21 will do its path. It's a, it's a um, decided path. And then the robot our robot or the main robot will move uh, from block 17 to 18 to 19 and then it will detect that at block 20 it's occupied so it will change its path and go uh, go up into uh, block 27 uh, then 35 and then to 36 of course it, when it turns it needs one extra step now in the case we are applying the priority algorithm either a1 or a2 what will happen the uh, the non-priority 
robot will stop at block 12 and will wait for the priority robot to pass and leave the block 20, after which the block, uh, the non-priority robot will move to block 20 and then to 21. And so at this time, um, if you look at the path, you say, oh, it looks the same, five steps, five steps, but actually the uh, priority robot had to um, apply uh, two curves, so turned here once and then turned up another time, so two turns, and in the if in the blue line, it's just uh, doing one uh, one uh, one turn. Now, uh, moving to another scenario, so multi-moving robots, now we have multi-moving robots, as you see two black lines, which show multi-moving robots other than the main robot or the red line, uh, with one robot uh, and two dynamic obstacle robots. We, I, I'm calling them obstacle robots because they are kind of obstacle for the main robot, but they are all three robots. So if, uh, so what will happen if there is no priority, so the main robot will move to point number three and will keep waiting until the first robot leaves uh, uh, node 11 goes to 12 and then after which the uh, main robot will be able to move until it reaches uh, node 36. However, if I'm using um, a priority, then as um, uh, you see, the, um, the main robot will have two options or two ways to move. One of them named A1, one of them is named A2, the uh, priority algorithm. And in A1, it will go to block four. Now the robot in, in block um, uh, will wait for it, will not reach block four. It's coming from block six. So it will wait. And then uh, the other one will wait until it reaches its goal. Now, um, in A2, the robot, which the other robot which will reach four, will, will, will just go ahead because it is counting, say it was at five, it was counting two steps of its steps, four will not move more, so it, uh, it will not intersect, so it will go here and then our robot will have to change its uh, uh, path uh, to go to um, in the red line until it reached node 36. Um, let me move along to another scenario, multi-moving obstacle also now, um, in this case we have uh, <clears throat> again a third uh, kind of, uh, uh, again, we have two robots moving along from uh, 17 to 11, and then as you see, it's waiting here, same thing here, it's very similar. I will uh, skip this one so that you know, not waste time. Um, okay, so um, <clears throat> so overall, the scenarios for multi-robot robots with the priority were considered and our system considered mobile obstacles in addition to static ones also. I did not show the static ones, but they are easy. Uh, now, the priority was statically uh, determined in advance for a single or master robot. So one robot had the priority, all the others were uh, of lower priority. So, so we have two levels of priority, one for just one, and uh, the, all the others, they were no non-priority robots. Uh, conflict detection solution was determined using one of these two priority algorithm A1 and A2. Uh, now, regarding the A1 and A2, they, they were tested and after, you know, several experiments, simulation, and um, they showed similar results, but the A2 was uh, less constraining for the other robots. So what I mean is uh, sometimes the other robot, they don't have to wait a long time. They can just actually go and reach their destination. Uh, using A2, and they're not restraining the main robot at, as as well as they are not uh, uh, being stopped or slowed down by it. So this is the only difference. But for the priority robot, A1, A2 were the same. Um, now taking the rotation time into consideration, it was, you know, we had a good performance in that. Uh, of course, this work is not finished. Uh, we did something, we did a collision-free path as a conclusion now. Um, to find effective to shortest time path and our path planning algorithm is improvement for original A star, which is a long time ago. We added two priority path A1, A2, smith result. It shows that the algorithm improved performance, and especially when we talk about priority, so it will give a priority for the main product. Now, 
uh, we would like to um, implement this proposal in the real environment for, for you know, the future. I uh, would like to add more parameters, for example, the speed is constant. Well, how about the speed changes? How about the the uh, robot uh, arrive to its destination? It wants to come back to source. So, you know, this is the store and tree process. The robot will not stay there, so it has to. So we need to, you know, calculate uh, in two ways. And mainly that's it. Uh, thank you so much uh, for listening. I hope I didn't take more than the time and uh, I'm open for uh, your questions. Okay, thank you, Charlie, for the presentation. Uh, now we move on to the uh, Q&A part of the presentation. If somebody have uh, any questions, please. Do, do I keep the screen like this? Or? Yes, yes, keep, keep it like oh, this. Yes, okay, thank you. So any, any question? Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I, I have uh, I have uh, two questions uh, yes. regarding uh, in, in slide number four. You you mentioned that you consider uh, uh, the speed as constant, and yes. you also mentioned in the future world that you may uh, work with uh, non-constant speed. How difficult is to incorporate this issue in your algorithm? Actually. Uh... It's not easy. At the current time, we just had the you know the turning, the 90 degrees turning uh, left right for the robot, and we assumed that it could be one step uh, like uh, between two nodes, and we can you know uh, or more more than that. But uh, the speed for the current time it's just uh, uh, fixed. Uh, if we need to incorporate the difference of speed, of course, the especially with the priority algorithm, we have to do extra calculations because, you know, uh, if we need to intersect uh, two robots, they will not intersect at the same location. So this has to be added, though it was not added currently in the formula. Um, I guess this is it. So just adding the speed factor, and we have to test if it's uh, if the algorithms still work the same way because maybe we I have need to adjust the priority algorithm a little bit in, to incorporate the speed. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chadi. Uh, uh, is there any any question from the audience? <laughs> Okay, I, I have a final question, uh, yes. Charlie. Uh, you consider two 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 um, strategies, A one and A two. I guess it is possible to add more strategies. Uh, A three, maybe moving three, uh, analyzing three steps forward, um, stuff like that. It is possible to add to consider that into algorithm. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, uh, uh, usually when you want to start or the robot will move, it will. you have to decide in advance uh, on one, using one, but it's true. And so if we need to, you know, uh, in some situations, maybe uh, we can have third or fourth option. I did not suggest more than this, but you, you are probably right. If the grid is big, maybe we can, bigger than this uh, size that we have here in the simulation, probably probably three steps or more can be taken into consideration and they will help. So this is um, it's a good idea, actually. I have to take into consideration. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Chadi, for, for the nice presentation. I, I, I give you thank a you applause so much. from here. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, do you need to upload this? Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Do I need to upload the, the uh, PowerPoint or it's... Uh, you, you can stop sharing. You can stop sharing your PowerPoint. Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. It's time yeah. to move on to the next presentation. Now is uh, uh, Diego. Diego's uh, work. Hi. Diego, are you ready? Yes. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm ready. Okay. Can please. Uh, yes, I, I can hear you. I can uh, see you. So please start sharing your screen. Okay, we can see your presentation. Uh, you will have uh, 15 minutes. I will let you know uh, once you have two minutes left. Um, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, now we cannot see your presentation. 
Okay, okay, yeah, okay, that's great, okay. So uh, the next presentation is uh, by Diego Tristan Rodriguez, and the title of the talk is the tuning of a modified model reference adaptive controller using a PSO algorithm. 15 minutes, Diego, go ahead. Thank you. Um, well, hi everyone, I'm Diego Tristan, and I'm going to present this article named tuning of a modified model reference adaptive controller using, in case, a PSO algorithm. But the tuning of the parameters of an adaptive controller is a key issue to improve the performance of a closed loop system. And however, it's a well-known fact about the model reference adaptive controllers and that it may produce violent transient responses. Specifically, and are some many cases are oscillatory, and those leading to poor performance. In this case, in this work, we focus into two main points. The first one is to propose a modified model reference adaptive control, MMRC, for controlling the speed of a DC motor. The idea is to add um, a damping, uh, add damping through an extra proportional term, the control law. And the second point is to turn this proposed MMRAC using a particle swarm optimization algorithm, and adding an extra term in the fitness function to exclude the solutions that lead to instability. And well, respecting to the MMRAC, we consider the one-dimensional dynamic system, linear, and showing one, and the reference model showing two. Uh, respecting to the, uh, with that, we define the tracking error. E define it as xm minus x, and obtaining its first derivative respect to time, we obtain the dynamic error showing three. And finally, <coughs> and taking into account the parameterization theta one and theta two showing four and five, um, we consider the next MMRAC law. Uh, which depends on the parameters estimates that one and theta two hat. The, <coughs> the control law is showing six, and the dynamics of the filtered error EF and the adaptive parameters theta one and theta two hat. Um, the dynamics are, are shown in seven, eight, and nine, respectively. To analyze its stability of in closed loop, uh, the following Lyapunov candidate function is defined. Like in then, and obtaining its time derivative, we obtain the <coughs> equation showing 11, and uh, which one obtaining the following upper bound showing 12. That we are going to call it like uh, calligraph B dot. Uh, the sigma is, is defined as here, and if we fulfill the <coughs> inequality show here, the <coughs> The derivative of the Lyapunov function is lower than zero, and therefore the solutions in closed loop system are uniformly optimally bounded. But that's that part. And from the for the particle swarm optimization, it's a um, well-known algorithm proposed in 1995 by Kennedy and Neverhart, and it was inspired for the behavior of, of bird frogs. And the PSO algorithm is composed of a swarm of n particles, set E, named here as set E, and for each particle, it's a velocity vector V. The PSO algorithm searches to minimize a fitness function J, and the, the discrete time dynamics described in 13.914 shows uh, how its velocity and position changes um, for each particle. Where omega is an um, inertia weight, C1 and C2 are learning factors, and the rand is the function of uh, random generators numbers from 0 to the terms p best and g best are defined as in 50-16. And uh, for this paper, the prediction boundary method uh, was implemented as a precautionary measure to limit the <coughs> The particles to a set of feasible solutions. The, this method <coughs> works uh, throughout the equation in 
for the implementation implementation of the PSO algorithm in order to turn offline the MM racing, the parameters of the plant we consider this as unknown. Nevertheless, uh, the lower and the upper bounds are are known, and the average of these parameters are defined as a bar equal to and b bar equal equal fifty. And the simulations are going to be with that parameters. And another thing, remembering the adaptive control law and it's that I put here just for remember. <clears throat> we can see that the parameters to be tuned are k, the control law, gamma one, gamma two, and kappa for the adaptive parameters. So the particles are defined they are defined as here. And on the other hand, the fitness function J that the PSO aims to minimize that we use in this is like in 19, where we use the error, the plan, and the exponential of the calligraph B dot. In this case, um, we use a bar to taking into account the average of the parameters of the dynamic plant, which one we are going to do the simulation. This term is implemented to know when uh, from the uh, for the PSO to know when the simulation is going to the instability. This is very important uh, because without the implementation of this part, we need around like uh, 1000 seconds of simulations that is very heavy. Uh, almost computationally. And with this part, with this ex exponential, we only need like six seconds. So, uh, finally, according to the stability analysis made through Yakunov, the set of SOD solutions uh, are like in Omega showing. But now, in order to obtain the minimization of the fitness function, uh, we use a sampling of 30 independent runs and with the purpose to obtain statistical results. And we we use 28 particles, and a maximum of 29 iterations, inertia weight of 0 0.7, and the learning factors of 0 0.9 and 0 0.94. And these parameters were tuned through erase package. And the um, values obtained the PSO, from the PSO algorithm of the, the controller, up to controller, and are shown from 21 to 24. And finally, the statistical results from the optimization uh, shows a standard deviation from zero that um, shows to us that the PSO algorithm is given congruent and good results. And for the real-time experiments, <clears throat> um, we use a platform like the depicted figure one, and that is composed from uh, uh, for a computer, a galvanic isolation box, the power amplifier, and the DC box. So, um, we made three experiments with different inertia disk, every experiment with a um, different inertia disk, uh, for the load or for the motor. In figure two, we can see the small, the medium, and the large disc, where the ladder is the combination of the first two discs. Um, well, and to, to measure, to quantitatively measure the performance that we, we obtained as a loop system response, we use the integral squared error, the integral of the absolute value of the control, and the integral of the absolute value of the control variation. The, <clears throat> the indexes are showing in 25, the expression of the index. So, now, respecting to the, <clears throat> to the real time experiments, from the closed loop response, we can see that we obtain a good response from the control law with the with the parameters tuned by PSO uh, throughout the change of the small, the medium, and the large disk, where we can know too that with more weight, <clears throat> we 
we obtain more um, a little more error from the control signaling Russell loop we can see that with the large disk or fine with more weight we use a little more <clears throat> control signal from the values of the performance indexes we can see the same results uh, the error we can see the error and the control signal um, increment through the through the weight is more. and it's it's interesting to note that the variation in the control loop is more or less similar through the change of the small the medium and the Uh, well, as the conclusions, uh, we can see that the tuning of the adaptive controllers uh, by means of the PSO algorithm produces an adequate performance in the case of the large changes in the inertia driven by the DC motor. And as second, the modification in the fitness function allows us to find the solutions where the dynamic system in was stable. And as a further work, and the proposed tuning approach will be extended to a case of adaptive control of n dimensional linear. In this case, we made it for the third dimension. And the second is um, we will consider other fitness functions that include the terms related to the control signal as a derivative of the signal to take into account the shattering threat, the possible shattering threat we we. So uh, we have some reference and thanks for your attention. Any questions? Then? Okay, Diego, thank you for the presentation. Now it's time for questions uh, from the audience. If somebody has a question, maybe you can raise your hand and we can give you the permissions to uh, activate your microphone and camera. Uh, yes, a friend, can you hear me? Daniel Machor. Uh, no. Yes, 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 I need. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, a small question, thank you for the presentation. Um, my question is related to the fitness function. Can you put these uh, slides? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Ah, sorry. Then... Yes. My question is more for the, for the theoretical point of view. Uh, as you mentioned, you have only you, you don't you don't have a symptotic stability, is right? You had only bounded solution. Yes, yes. And the problem is that this integral from zero to infinity could not converge. You have a constant solution, only bounded. In my opinion, you need to guarantee that this uh, the function, the error, is uh, asymptotically stable. And in my opinion, well, well, yeah. I, I don't know if you consider this. Yeah, you have reason, and uh, this is maybe yes. I I didn't take it into account. I, I'm going to take it to the following research. Thank you for that. <laughs> yes, m maybe uh, can you put the the. The slides uh, uh, before this, the next one, the, the previous one. Yes. Uh, like no, what is this uh, stability analysis? What is this stability oh, analysis? Uh, the stability analysis. Function? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Maybe you can use here the LaSalle principle in order to assure that the, you have a synthetic stability. I don't know. The, uh, maybe that, that, that could be. In this way, the solution. Okay, that's my question. Thank you, friend. Thank you for the question and thank you for the answer, Diego. Uh, any other question uh, from the audience? Okay, I, I, I have a question, Diego. Um, yes. What's, uh, in your opinion, what's the easy part? 
and the difficult part of using PSO for this type of uh, con uh, control problems. Um, I'm going to say the difficult part. I, I don't I don't think that it's an it's part. Um, the difficult part is that uh, for the, the dynamic systems, like I explained it here. Um, in this in this kind of of algorithms, they they are they are attached uh, to the to the simulations, and if we if we don't simulate what we need, <clears throat> it's very difficult to synchronize a good um, a good controller. So in this case, uh, we have to put uh, attention in what we want to to obtain and and ensure that it it issue appears in the simulation because it it's if it's not in the simulation it will be a bad performance obtained by the okay uh but but my question was about the about the use of pso not a traditional control technique Oh, the, dif yes. the difficulties of using PSO as now you are, 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 are you are using PSO. So it is difficult. Why it is easy? Why? In fact, <clears throat> I, I think it's um, PSO have an easy implementation because it's um, some kind of simple dynamic discrete dynamic system. So. I think comp computationally talking, it's 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 simple and easy to, to implement. Uh -huh. And there is a difficulty uh, about its usage in this type of problems. Um, yes, I think it's difficult in the in the way of taking into account, as I mentioned before, the the issues that we that we that we want to find in the in the simulations. If it's not in the simulation, mm -hmm. it will be a bad performance. Mm -hmm. Real-time oh. experiments. Okay, Diego. Thank you for the answers. Thank and you. thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, now it's time for the third presentation. Uh, is uh, Jorge Alberto Lizarraga in the room? Yes. Ah, okay. I yeah, I, I can see you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, can you start sharing your screen? Oh, good. Thank you. Yes. We can see your presentation. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you and we okay. can see you. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we are ready. Uh, let me yes, introduce you. Uh, okay, this is the, the third presentation of the session, um, uh -huh. which is presented by Jorge uh, Alberto Lizarraga. And the title is, uh, I'm sorry if I didn't spell it correctly, but it's Femasticus Hypotenemus Based Algorithm for Optimal Node Selection of uh, a Pinning Control of Complex Network. It's good. <laughs> okay, 15 minutes. Thank Go ahead. You. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I am, uh, hello, my name is Jorge Lizarga, and I am currently studying a, a PhD in the Department of Electrical Engineer in Simbestafonia, Guadalajara. And I will explain the subject Femastitious Hipodenemos Based Algorithm for Optimal Knob Selection in Pinning Control of Complex Network. This work is a collaboration between me and Javier Ruiz and Edgar Sanchez. Okay. The pinning control technique is used to determine a reduced number of control nodes to achieve the desired objectives in complex network. In the last decade, uh, the study of the complex network properties has rapidly increased. Uh, the interest in this topic is because so network appear everywhere in the nature in the society. They are part of our daily life and are present in different games of system. But the control with this technique implies uh, two problems. The first one is determining how many controls are needed. 
And the second one is where to put them so to achieve the best possible performance. For these goals, heuristic uh, algorithms can be used. Okay, the contribution of the papers, of the paper. The general contribution is a new optimized knob selection algorithm is proposed for implementation of pinning control for the compared network. An specific contribution is the algorithm optimized knob selection or using a criterion to ensure thirsting asymptotic stability of the complex network. For this uh, technique is necessary the implementation of the V-stability tool. Uh, this is described in the uh, references of the eight of the paper. Okay, the uh, complex network is a graph. For example, consider a network of n sub n nodes where each node is a n sub dimensional dynamic system. The node in the system uh, is uh, the node are there are a system with a different characteristic. For example, the coupling strange is represented for C, and I represent the strange of the Laplacian, uh, the Laplacian matrix. For example, is there a connection in the node I and node J? A is equal to one in the other case is equal to zero. F represent the cell dynamic of the system in the nodes and gamma represent the internal connection in the system, the connection of the states. Okay, bien. The network or in the compact form or the compact control form is represent for this equation, the equation two is defined as, where the V represent the input matrix and U is the control input. Uh, the situation is when the node I uh, belongs to the pinion node set, the input control is equal to product the gain, uh, the gain control or the, the, the system. In the other case, is equal to zero. The pinion node set is represent for the letter N in this notation. And for you, for the B stability tool is calculated and so P satisfies the inequation, this. Okay. But what is the problem with this? Or what is the contribution and the general contribution with this algorithm? For, uh, for example, according to the referent eight, the network uh, one is locally asymptotically stable about its equilibrium point. It is a closed loop characteristic matrix. The equation four is the most important in this analyzing this uh, technique. For example, is semi-negative defined uh, where C and I are the traces of the matrix G. Theta represent the passivity of the system. A number uh, represent a transition between stable and stale. K, K represents the matrix of the control gain matrix. The stability of the divided is called uh, the stability and base uh, assumption one in the reference A. This method converges the original stability problem to the study of the negative property of the equation four which extremely depends of the selection of the Lyapunov function and the passivity uh, degree. Okay, the optimization problem. The optimization problem consists in the construction of the main diagonal of the matrix K. For determining if this matrix is semi-negative or semi-positive, okay? For example, Minimize uh, objective function. This objective function is necessarily depends of the pinning nodes control set subject to the this inequation, the max uh, agent volumes of the matrix M. The optimization problems can then the formula is as follows and the same the control uh, the control loud. Okay, for example, uh, objective function, the, the select of the objective function is formulated as the consumption energy or energy consumption on the pinning nodes. Taking the remark, the taking into consideration the stability and the energy is consumed only at the pinning node. The maximum volume of energy consumption is obtained T sub zero. Okay, this is the, uh, the algorithm. Pimastichos y ponemos algorithm. Uh, this algorithm is inspiring for the biological control of the coffee berry border. This coffee berry border by, is controlled, biological controlled by means of the parasitoid was uh, Pimastichos. Uh, agent in hipodenemos optimize the volume of the control gain. Uh, this is uh, uh, the task for this agent. And the FEMA teachers optimize uh, its position in the diagonal K. 
is to say the problem, the optimization problem consists in the nonlinear, uh, multi-criterial and combinatorial problem. Yes. Okay, this agent have a uh, relation, symbiotic relationship, parasitoid relationship. For example, for the algorithm is the same like the other uh, uh, problem, minimize how yet it function that depends of the finite control uh, set, but subject to the control set cardinality of the agent P is equal to N sub P. And the inequation for the B stability tool and the construction, the main diagonal of the matrix K. The FIMA teaches uh, select the position of the control mat, the control gain, and the agent uh, hypodenemus uh, optimize the control gain in the matrix. There are two uh, uh, populations. The first one is the FIMA teaches, and the second one is the hypodenemus. Okay. The cycle, uh, the life cycle of the FIMA station coffea is uh, the first is the coffee, uh, the FIMA station coffee parasitation is the population initialization. When the first generation is created, the first generation is created in the one interaction. The second is incubation, when the optimization, when the objective function is evaluation. Yes, it's uh, the thickness of the age agent in the population. Then, performance based in decision vector weighting. The decision vector is modified in two cases possible, in two possible cases. For example, in the first one is when the verse uh, uh, implies the female and female. Uh, and the decision vector is modified the, form, the partial form. And the second one is when the bird uh, depends on the female and male. This uh, decision vector is modified and all the characteristic in all the structure. Finally, emergence from the host. The new generation in the host print, the elite uh, generation. This is uh, like a PCO when I uh, select a local, uh, the, the local base, the uh, global uh, population. Okay. There was visits different COVID very in order to share to search for hand pay to parasite. For example, the complex network uh, represents the COVID tree graph, and the visits are remembered for age agent in the population of mastitian and inherit for the new generation with the decision vector. Yes, this modification depends with the verb and the characteristic like the color, location. A characteristic that guarantees the population better in the new generations. In the next year, the hypodenemus campaign drill very at a near to apex, the soft step area of the coffee fruit. This uh, behavior, this bio biological behavior, is represented by the border function. The border function comprises the third space for the uh, pens of the global base and the local base in the in the hypodenemus uh, populations. Yes, the border uh, function uh, are defined as where this is the upper border function and the lower border function are the initial, okay, the initial bounds respectively. She uh, is the compression gain and N sub T is the interaction number of the gamma is the interaction coefficient. Okay, the flow chart for this algorithm. The first, population P and H are created, are initialized. The symbiotic relationship is the, is the same uh, thickness for age uh, agent in the population between the uh, objective function are evaluated. The question is, were there female female birds? Yes, in the case is yes. The thickness for this is modified, is created in the, the, of, of the second interaction. The vector decision is modified, the partial modified. And the second question is, was the entry population evaluate? Yes. Were there uh, female and male birds? Yes. The elite uh, population is updated. Is termination criterion satisfied? Yes. And in the other case, the population P and H are generated. Yes. The following experiments are carried out to compare the performance of the proposed PSG algorithm with other heuristic optimization algorithms showed us. Uh, the Unlion optimizer, Techniques Learn Basin optimization, Gray Wall optimizer, Animal Migration optimizer, Particle is One optimization, Artificial Decolony, Gain Thirst Knowledge, 
by geography based optimization, the well optimization algorithms, and the optimization by a colony of cooperative agents. All uh, these algorithms have a characteristic, a similar characteristic with the new uh, proposed algorithms. This is the complex network data for the three com different complex network in the experiment. And the most important that is uh, the number of the combinatorial that depends for the NSAT P number. This NSAT P number is the minimal possible, okay, is the minimal possible number for the selection of the pin nodes is determined with the P stability tool, but don't guarantee that is the minimal. This is the, uh, the, the, the true problem with this uh, optimization uh, task. Okay, bien. This is the result. The number red represents the algorithm that no guarantees a stabilization network because there are a present a, a, a agent balance positive, positive agent balance. The function G and the function L uh, uh, is the penalty function for these algorithms. This is uh, in specific the thickness for the objective function, energy consumption, or other objective function that you can be uh, optimizing the complex network topology, uh, coupling strange, uh, time converse. And the blue number uh, is the result of the algorithm that guarantees a stabilization network because there is not present of the positive fetching balance in the matrix uh, M in the equation four. Okay, but there is the, there is a particular uh, situation with the algorithm animal migration optimizer. When the size of the complex network is tiny, uh, the algorithms in specific the animal migration have a broad that the animals can be uh, in the same place. The animals can be the same place. The, and then the problem of combinatorial change to the permutation problem. But when the, the complex network uh, have a large size. Two minutes. OK, thank you. Uh, only the algorithms of, uh, for example, can be guarantees the stabilization in the network. And this is the other result. And this is the, conclu the, the conclusion. The most important is that FA algorithm was developed to solve the specific problem. The optimal knob selection and pinning controls complex network, which I mentioned, implies no linear combinatorial optimization with multi criteria. Uh, this is my reference, and thank you for your time. OK, uh, Jorge Alberto, thank you for the presentation. Now it's time for questions uh, from the audience. If somebody wants to ask something to Jorge Alberto, please raise your hand. You can activate your microphone if you have, have it uh, uh, off. Okay, in, in the meantime, uh, I have a, a question, okay. uh, Jorge Alberto. Yes. Uh, you, you are comparing uh, different uh, meta heuristic algorithms. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very different meta heuristic algorithms. How, how did you uh, calibrate the parameters of each of the compare algorithms? Yes, yes. Uh, to, to get good results? How, how, how was that process? In a specific uh, conclusion, uh, for example, this, this, is, this is a problem with a new uh, meta heuristic algorithms. For example, Comparing the FA algorithm with other heuristic algorithm is possible if only if the optimization problem in question consists of the same problem for which the FA algorithm was developed. For example, if you can uh, compare the FA with the other technique of comparison, it's possible that the other algorithms have a better uh, solution because the problem is specific. Uh, for example, what, what is the, the most important, the most efficient algorithms in all? I think that depend with the optimization problem, with the pain for the specific problem. And I select all algorithms because the algorithm FA has a similar specific characteristic. For example, in the ant lion, uh, there is a symbiotic relationship between two agents. In the great wall, there are a hierarchy, and the well optimization is the modify of the third space. In the other, for example, animal migration optimization, there are a elite agent. And I construct a new uh, 
algorithm with all characteristics, but this algorithm is only for solve this specific optimization problem. This is uh, the, the situation. Mm -hmm. with yeah, algorithm. yeah, yeah. I, I, the, the suggestion here is that you, you need to be sure that mm -hmm. each of the compare algorithms are well yes. calibrated to give the best performance so far for each one of them to get a fair comparison. Otherwise, your comparison can be weak because mm -hmm. you exactly. it, maybe mm -hmm. uh, you are favoring some algorithms over others. So you, my, my suggestion is to, to take care about that okay, in okay, this huge set of comparison. Maybe comparing mm -hmm. just a small set of algorithms uh, and and I don't see, for example, well established evolutionary algorithms like okay. evolution okay. strategies, genetic algorithms, differential evolution. So mm -hmm. may, maybe you can move to, to that because some of them are not well established algorithms. So they have some critics about this type of algorithm. Yes, so yes, yes. maybe maybe in this way you can enrich your research. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there, is there any other question from the audience? Friend, a small question. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. please. Uh, thank you, Jorge. Uh, thank my you. question is, uh, okay, it seems that the problem is reduced to the computation of the energy values of the metrics, okay? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, it's correct. And, and this condition is only for stability? Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, uh -huh. it's correct. But, but if I understand well, the idea is to optimize the selection of the nodes. Uh huh. And, can you and the, the determine the minimum the... number. Uh huh. Okay. I, I don't see the, 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 the direct relation between the stability and this uh, selection of the node. Okay, okay, okay. And, uh... The objective is select the minimum number and select which node uh, can be uh, pinning node. And all depend for the B stability tool. Uh, the principal objective that in the multi criteria, the most important uh, criterion is the stability of the network. And this is determined with calculate the B stability in the reference eight. And it's, it's the same, it, 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 that's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Thank you for your comment, for your question. Okay, thank you. And um, okay, uh, thank you for the interesting presentation, Jorge Alberto. Thank you very much. And we thank, thank our speaker. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, I, okay, bye. <laughs> bye bye, thank you. Okay. Uh, is the fourth speaker here? Oh, Oscar, okay. Uh, Oscar, we can see you. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, yes, I can hear you. Uh, give me a second. Yes, can you start uh, can you see my screen? screen? Uh, not yet. Wait, wait, wait a second, just to give time. Okay, and now? Uh, not yet. Oh, my. Maybe you can okay. start over again. <clears throat> mm. I, can you s see my screen? Or uh, not yet? No, 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 yet. Okay. Uh, okay. Ah, ah, okay. Uh, and now? Uh, no. Ah, ah, okay. Uh, the share button is at uh, the upper uh, at the upper set of buttons in the right hand side part of the of the window. Okay, uh, uh, and, and now can you see my screen? Uh, I have a... Sorry for the... the no, don't worry. You have two monitors? No. Uh, no, I, okay. I, I use single. Okay. Uh, and... 
Ok, uh, mute, ok. Ok, uh, uh, now, now, now we can see your screen. Ah, ok. Uh, this uh, uh, is, uh, I guess, Linux, ok. Ok, now we can see your slides, ok. Ah, uh, finally, sorry yes. for the delay. Don't worry, oh, oh, oh. ok. So let me introduce you and you will have 15 minutes for mm -hmm. your presentation, ok. So, um, uh, this is the uh, third presentation uh, of this uh, session, Automatic Control. And it will be presented by Oscar uh, Gonzalez Miranda. The title of the talk is Integration of Perception, Planning and Control in the Auto um, Mini 4.0. So go ahead, uh, Oscar. OK, thank you very much. Uh, I prepared this context. First, I'll give you an abstract of this work. I talk about the architecture of decision making system and I describe the experimental platform called Automine. Also, I'm going to show you some methods of our group to do a perception system, a lateral control for autonomous vehicles using visual feedback. Uh, other of them talks about the, the, the behavior selector system, ATC. Uh, finally, I'll give you my conclusions. Okay, uh, this work is a review of our work that talks about automated driving system or ADS. Uh, this work present methods to do a uh, path and trajectory planning, uh, to do the lateral control of a car with visual feedback, to make uh, convolutional neural networks to, to detect and classify objects on the image, ATC. The decision-making system of a car controls or vehicle to drive it following the traffic regul traffic regulations. And to build it, it sees two architectures. Uh, the first is the modular, and it divides the problem in sub-problems. Uh, see, for example, the behavior control, the path planning, the trajectory generation, and the movement controller. All of them, uh, gives control signals to, to move our car. The uh, second architecture uh, uses machine learning uh, to take all perception data, system, perception system data, and give us the control signals. Uh, we have been developed uh, works with BAT. The automatic vehicle is a little car-like robot and it has a RGBD camera, a 2D LiDAR, a 90 degree inertial sensor, and it has two motors, a servo con a servo motor to control the steering of the car and a brushless motor to give traction. The computer is a Intel NUC and it has Ubuntu and RAW software. Okay, talking about the decision making system. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the perceptual system or the perception, uh, oh. talking about the decision making architectures, but needs a good perception system. And it takes all sensors data and give a measurement of the relevant states of the car. Uh, for example, to detect and measure where is the road, the lanes, and the 
uh, the lanes and what is the form of them? Uh, we use, uh, for example, the homography transformation. Uh, how you can see, we take the camera's image and with this uh, transformation, we can measure the uh, road lines and use it to, to do the lateral control of a car. In another of our, our works, uh, we use a convolution, convolutional neural network to classify each pixel on the image and, and obtain what line is the right line or the left line on the road. Uh, we did it because it's sometimes uh, some lines of the road doesn't appear on the visual field of the camp. Uh, and it's important for our control strategies. Um, talking about the LIDARS data, it's easy to see when our car have an obstacle in front of it or behind it. But when we want to do the parking maneuver, first we need to align our car with the others. And, and to do it, uh, we first take the leader's data and use Ransack to, uh, to do a linear regression. How you can see, we can model all DC cars with a yellow line. And then our, our strategy is to, to maintain our car with the same direction of the line, but with a separation of 15 centimeters. To detect some objects on the image, we use a convolutional neural network with a yellow B3 B architecture. Uh, it let us detect traffic signals, pedestrians, cars, ATC. Uh, this is an example of the of its performance. How you can see, it can detect pedestrians, uh, bicycles. Uh, some traffic signals as the stop or another cars. Uh, this, we train it uh, with some public data sets and with image collected by us. Uh, we need to build a data set uh, using image of the roads in urban environments uh, to, to give a good performance. Uh, in other work, uh, giving a topology, topological map of a city, we use the Dijkstra algorithm to calculate the optimal path to go from a node to other and we did the trajectory plan. In this work, we considered the Ackerman direction system of the car and it let us navigate in an urban environment. So we can a, a planning a how to drive on a, on a city. <clears throat> Oh, okay, uh, to select what driving maneuver or car have to do, uh, we designed it at feed forward neural network. Uh, it has four output neurons and take binary values. Only one of them gives uh, one output and the others gives a zero. Uh, it is because the auto mining doesn't do two driving maneuvers at the same time. Uh, 
on the other hand, uh, the inputs are binary values. Um, binary variables and they change their values depending on the perception system. Uh, to train it, uh, we have to build a true table between the inputs and the outputs. And with it, uh, with this, we drove the car in an urban environment. In a simulation. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, to control the steering of the car, uh, we proposed this math uh, model. Uh, this is a linear time invariant system, and uh, the states are the lateral error and the orientation error, but relatives from the road. Uh, to measure them, uh, we can use the homography transformation, but we can use uh, this model uh, given a, a, with a trajectory. <clears throat> Uh, with this, we drop the car in, no, uh, we, uh, so giving a path or car can drive following it. <clears throat> uh, uh, finally, uh, we also explored the end-to-end -end decision making architecture also. Uh, in 2017, NVIDIA's worker proposed a CNN, a convolutional neural network called Pilonet. It takes two minutes, the image two minutes the more, camera. please. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, we proposed a convolutional neural network to to control the steering of the car, taking the image of the camera and it give us a steering uh, of the car. Uh, it uses the image of the camera and the leader's data and our car can uh, keep uh, drive uh, following the, the road lane and it can passing. It can do the passing maneuver. Uh, this is an example of he, of its performance. Uh, this is the trajectory. Uh, in green, we have the trajectory of the car using the convolutional neural network, and it ca it can uh, do two driving maneuvers. So uh, our conclusion are that. Uh, we present a review of works over the last five years in, uh, in collaboration with uh, three universities. Uh, all these projects present different kinds of control algorithms that were developed and implemented on the AutoMini prototype. And the work reported in our paper corresponds to five degree theses uh, for of them actually in course, and one of them is an undergraduate report. Um, okay, we can the question. Okay, Oscar, uh, thank you, you for the me? yes, yes, yes. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, uh, now uh, we have time for some questions. So, if somebody wants. Uh, to ask, please uh, activate your microphone. If you if you can do it, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, Oscar, I, I have a, a question regarding the uh, uh, artificial neural network that you are using. You mentioned that you use a convolutional neural network, but also a feed forward. Shallow. 
neural network. Uh, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. How how uh, did you define the topology, the architecture of the of the neural network that you are using? Uh, for example, for the convolutional neural network, are you using a a, a predefined uh, uh, architecture, or you are modifying the architecture of the neural network for for this particular work? Uh, okay, uh, the yellow V3 architecture is, it appears in the, in the literature and we uh, use it to try to detect uh, uh, DC objects. Uh, uh, so we define uh, what type of objects uh, we can classify and we build a data set uh, to, to train it. Uh, we have to let uh, and it's a, uh, uh, it, 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 we, we have to, to invert time in it, on it. And talking about the decision, decision making, no, the, the behavior selector, it's another neural network and uh, it has binary variables as input and the output. And to try it, uh, uh, we need to build a true table. And to, to do the classification, it's easy. Uh, 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 we only need five neurons in one high uh, layer, and that is all. <laughs> uh -huh, yes, yeah, the, the, the convolutional neural network is, is, the, is the YOLO neural network, that, and you, you, you just use it. You didn't modify anything. You just use the YOLO uh, convolutional neural network. Exactly. But, but, but in the case of, of this one, this is a, a particular design made by you. you. You design, okay, just one layer and five neurons in the hidden layer, and that's it. You, you design that. Okay, okay, it's, it's, it's clear uh, exactly. for me. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, because we need a classification uh, between the inputs and the outputs. Mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. is, it's easy to do it with a simple neuron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, maybe you, you can use a, a, an even simple classifier, maybe a KNN or or a, a decision tree or other uh, other classifier. But but that's okay. It, using a, a, a simple neural network. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, Oscar. Uh, any final quick question from the audience? Thank you. Just more question. Uh, what is the same direction? Uh, which are the control load that you implemented in here to try with uh, different structure control? Uh, uh, can, can you read the last uh, part, please? Yes, the question is with respect to the control, the control load, which kinds of control do you implement here? Ah, okay. Uh, uh, this is a high-level controller, and to do the to do each maneuver, uh, we use a lateral controller. Uh, for example, the lane keep, the lane keeping. Uh, uh, give me a second. Uh, I don't. Ah. Oh, 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 okay, uh, our lateral controller is a proportional controller, and we designed it using the we, using this uh, math model, uh, and we didn't need a, another type of controller to move the car on the road. Okay. And to do the oh, another maneuvers as the parking. Uh, we use precalculated tra trajectories. 
uh, and yes. has our car doesn't move speedily, uh, we can use it uh, without problems. Yes, okay, you are using PID controllers, classical PID controllers, is that right? Uh, exactly. Okay. Uh, okay. Only PID controllers. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And we thank uh, Oscar for the presentation. Okay, uh, this was the fourth presentation. Now we move up to the last presentation of this session. Uh, Oscar, can you stop sharing your screen, please? And uh, let uh, Professor Ramakrishna uh, to start sharing your screen, please. Uh, the screen is visible? Yes, uh, we can see your uh, presentation. We can see you, yeah. we can hear you. So let me introduce you and you will start your presentation, okay? Yeah. Okay. Good morning Thank to you. all. Yeah. yeah go, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, you want. You have uh, 15 minutes, please. Okay. Good morning to you all. Uh, I'm Dr. V. Ramakrishna, uh, presenting my research work, Design of Smart Fertilizer Chain System from Factory to Farmer. And uh, other co-authors are Krishna Kumar from CBIT, uh, India, and uh, D. Deepika, MGIT, Telangana, India. And these are the contents which I'm going to present in the next 10 to 15 minutes. I'll start with the abstract introduction and the methodology which we followed that will be discussed. Then after that, experimental setup for the methodology which we have followed. And uh, finally, the results uh, of what we have uh, done, uh, uh, that will be explained uh, and uh, conclusion and the scope of the future work. Here, uh, first I'll start with the abstract, uh, what uh, we have actually uh, did. Uh, we have taken an optical transducer and uh, which uh, generally identifies and estimates nitrogen uh, phosphorus potassium NPK in the soil. And uh, it's uh, we've uh, identified, estimated the values of this NPK uh, to for the soil richness, which uh, in, uh, improves the quality and also uh, which will be helpful uh, after analyzing. It will be helpful for reducing the utilization of fertilizers so that uh, the soil richness will be improved. And uh, we have uh, uh, used uh, photodiode and a detecting component. Uh, and uh, after that, after gathering the data with the gadgets, what we did is uh, we've connected it to Boltino microcontroller. We have uh, sent the data to cloud processing with IoT. IoT technology is also used in this uh, work. And after that, the important uh, concept, uh, task is uh, the um, uh, developing an app uh, using blockchain technology, uh, which uh, is simply the decentralized app, a GUI app is developed so that it can be useful uh, for the uh, farmers so that uh, at when this NPK levels are less at that time, uh, at that point, they can purchase fertilizers and you, they can use. In this way, we can improve the uh, you know, or the uh, richness of the soil. And uh, here uh, we can also reduce the groundwater nitrogen pollution with the proposed method. And coming to this uh, introduction part of uh, our work, uh, mainly NPK levels, mainly used for plant growth. Uh, uh, if you take the N nitrogen, which helps to grow roots of plant and potassium for leaves, and uh, if you take the pastures, it uh, helps in the growth of uh, stems and uh, branches. And finally, this uh, complete agriculture system which addresses the soil variability in order to increase the uh, you know, profitability, optimized output, and uh, it also enhances the quality of uh, production. And uh, <clears throat> the main reason uh, why we have used this blockchain technology is because of the security purpose and it's transparent. We can maintain uh, the transactions, we can record all the transactions, what we have done, and uh, it is a secure way and it's a transparent to all the farmers. Uh, that's why we have uh, uh, chosen this blockchain technology to develop that. Uh, 
the app is developed and which estimates the required fertilizer amount for the soil and this is at the point of sale uh, so that at when these NPK levels are very less at that point of time only they can uh, you know uh, require this fertilizers. This is uh, uh, combined with the IoT technology for precision agriculture, which is generally needed for monitoring, securing, and analyzing agriculture data to improve the productivity. That is uh, what uh, our main uh, uh, motto of this work. And once you maintain the data, agriculture data, and traditional way of storing, sorting, and distribution in digital format, then it will be uh, very useful for the farmers so that they can save some. Uh, the amount of uh, which they can spend on the uh, crop. Here, the methodology which we followed, the heart of the project is optical transducer, which is combination of light transmission and light detection system, where this light transmission consists three LEDs, red, blue, and green, and uh, the light detection system. Uh, here, uh, the reason is of these three colors. Why we have selected this red, blue, green? Because the wavelength of wavelengths of these three uh, LEDs are uh, equal to the wavelengths of uh, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And uh, if you see the optical characteristics of NPK and LEDs, uh, absorb absorption wavelength and uh, wavelength of this LEDs are shown in, uh, in the table one. Uh, nitrogen phosphorus, potassium wavelengths, absorption wavelengths are uh, very near to this wavelengths of uh, LEDs. So that's why we have selected these three LEDs. And uh, this light detection system, which consists of all these things, uses a photodiode and resistors which collects the light rays and it is connected to the microcontroller, Arduino microcontroller, uh, which is shown in the diagram. Uh, this is shown in the figure one. Uh, here, the photodiode is a type of sensor which collects the light rays and sends them to the microcontroller, which is Arduino, for the next steps. Here, the diagram, uh, the figure shows the Arduino, you know, which is connected with all other con components. Just now I described photosensor diode module and the LEDs, and it is connected to IDE also. The main advantage of using this uh, Bolt IoT kit or Arduino microcontroller is connected to this uh, board I this kit because of it is having inbuilt Wi-Fi module and also uh, is having ID integrated development environment where um, can code and we can execute. That's why we have uh, selected this. And uh, after collecting the data, the next step is to maintain the database and to uh, give uh, the data when the NPK levels are less. So for that, the blockchain setup. Uh, uh, where these NPK values uh, will be taken as inputs and it shows the output as the amount of fertilizers needed to the particular uh, farm, respective farmers. And the methodology, just now I described, uh, ex coming to the experimental setup, uh, if you see the diagram, this is the setup of practical implementation of optical transducers and Arduino you know, is connected. Uh, it's uh, nothing but open source um, electronics uh, uh, tool we can use uh, for uh, uh, interfacing uh, this uh, our optical transducer with the board, you know, IDE integrated development environment. Here, uh, after entering the credentials, uh, we can log into this board, you know, IDE for connection between the board, you know, device and IDE. Then we'll observe, we have recorded uh, the uh, blinking of uh, this LEDs, uh, blue, green, and red. Then we have established this uh, connection securely. And if you see this uh, on this board, you know, IDE, uh, the screenshot which have uh, um, as a figure four, uh, the, that is named as a temperature sensor. Here we can add multiple bolt you know, devices on this idea depending on our uh, usage, depending on our application. And uh, then this uh, IDE and all other uh, the connections between interfaces between this uh, optical transducer and uh, this uh, uh, Arduino microcontroller and uh, this uh, IDE. What we'll do is after gathering the data, we'll uh, uh, send, uh, we'll push it to the cloud where uh, after deployment, uh, we'll get the results from the another web page that is uh, designed with the blockchain. Data is sent into blockchain part for further analysis. 
So a web page where the data is taken and displays the record of each transaction of different ports. We can observe the different uh, ports. For this, uh, we have hosted locally uh, used JavaScript uh, Node.js to build this blockchain. And uh, this decentralized app, uh, which an interface which is provided for transparency and to also to validate the transactions. And this is developed using HTML and CSS JavaScript. And the uh, interface uh, screenshot is given here, the web page. And the database, uh, the blockchain database comes with the picture to verify the transactions. And uh, this is also the database uh, or, uh, where we'll store all the transactions records so that we can verify when the NTK levels are very less. In that particular time, uh, the uh, uh, point of sales will uh, sell the uh, fertilizers. Farmers will purchase the fertilizers uh, and they can use. Here, uh, everything will be uh, recorded. It provides uh, generally the details of transaction ID, uh, dealer address, former address, etc. etc. Here, and uh, coming to the results, uh, we have uh, uh, taken the ID, uh, this output values in terms of uh, voltages, which are displayed on the screen by using the ID, Arduino ID, which is used. Uh, here, uh, this shows uh, the uh, values in terms of voltages. And after analysis, uh, the values which uh, of NPK, which are in the range of table values, which I'll show in the next slide, those will be considered and when this low amount of NPK, then uh, are high or uh, medium. When this NPK values uh, lies in the band, which is mentioned, then only it will be considered. Otherwise, it will not be considered. See, one value is uh, where the measure value is 2.61 when nitrogen LED is used. So from the table, we can see that the soil has a medium amount of nitrogen. So similarly, we can uh, check uh, with other nutrients nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. When the values falls in this uh, and between the, uh, for example, take a nitrogen 0 0.31 to 2.508, and then uh, it will be considered as low. At that point of time, the fertilizer will be supplied. So in this way, we have designed this DApp, and uh, these are the screenshots which are connected uh, to the web page uh, through the port 3001, various ports are connected. Here, uh, generally, the values which are in the ratio of 4 to 1, then the consider that soil is perfect. That means ideal. In that case, this value, this uh, fertilizer will be supplied. That is what uh, the complete agriculture system, which utilizes this IoT and blockchain technology. Here, uh, the URL and each web page, which is designed with the web page and uh, the D app. Uh, and we can also use in the mobile by using the bold IBT app. Uh, here, whenever this uh, web page, you are in each web page shows this port number 3001, uh, that means the blockchain ends is hit on the port 3001. Like that, we have uh, shown three, uh, two other uh, ports uh, which hits this blockchain URL. And uh, from where we have uh, maintaining the records all all these are uh, decentralized and uh, you can't alter the database from one node that's the advantage security will be provided and uh, everything will be maintained and these are the screenshots of port 3003 and uh, port 3004 and coming to the conclusion uh, this is a complete uh, design of smart fertilizer supply chain when the NPK levels are less then only fertilizers will be supplied so that farmers can purchase and uh, they will be used so uh, uh, we have integrated two cutting edge technologies like uh, the blockchain and IoT uh, for smart agriculture system. And uh, further, it can be improved by developing into automated blockchain and a lot more potential uh, than what here offers, what we are uh, designed. And uh, you can use different sensors to bring out the efficient, accurate and precise information about the nutrient levels, how they are being affected by the different factors that can also be measured and this. Uh, can be stored. And these are the papers which we have uh, referred for our work. Thank you. And uh, now I'm open for questions. Okay. Thank you for the interesting presentation. Now we time we have uh, time for questions. Is there any question from the audience? I have a question. Uh, this yes, is a very yes. interesting application, and I, I mean high impact application. 
considering the, 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 the particular domain that it is uh, dealing with it. Uh, but it is, uh, uh, do you plan to, 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 because it seems like a prototype right now, do you plan to, to, to um, go to the real users and uh, install this application in a particular area of uh, India? Actually, we have uh, tested this uh, by taking some values and uh, it's uh, uh, we got the positive results and now we are going to implement and that means install and the complete thing. First, uh, we initially we've tested and we got the results. So that's why we are going further. OK, OK. And uh, I mean, this is uh, like a, 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 I mean, a research uh, work, but it can it can also be a software product. Do you have any plans about that? Yes, uh, means, uh, please uh, come again. Yes, uh, did you have some plans because that you did this uh, research that you are doing uh, yes. can become a software, a software product that you can sell. So do you have yes, some yes. plans about that? <laughs> yes, uh, later on, uh, once it's uh, installed and uh, then we can go for selling of this to the farmers uh, for, for the point of sales for the fertilizer shops and also we can extend it to uh, other parts also. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a, a, a another question. Uh, how important is the blockchain part in, in your in, in the whole system? Because you mentioned a lot the part of the blockchain. Security is very important in this particular yes. application. Yes. So that no one can alter uh, the a lot of scams we are saving and uh, seeing. Uh, so to avoid those scams, uh, if anybody enters and if you, uh, it, it changes the record of a particular farmer or uh, a group of farmers, then it will affect the entire uh, you know, amount which is invested uh, by the farmer for the crap. So uh, the, by implementing this blockchain, each and every record is secured. No one can alter from one node. It's a decentralized. So that's uh, one of the good feature of our work. OK, OK, thank you for the answers. Uh, any uh, final question from the audience? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, what's the, the specific data that you show to the farmers? They can use the, their device to share. Uh, the night. Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, the NPK levels, nitrogen, phosphorus, which are helpful in the growth of the plants. Uh, after measuring, we can also take other parameters uh, by implement, by employing the, the sensors. We can show, uh, we can extend it uh, so that uh, we can take all other parameters. So far, uh, now we are taking this NPK, the nutrients, which are uh, most of the uh, important nutrients uh, for the growth of the uh, plants. And and they can see in in some device like a tablet, uh, phones, the data. They can see this data. The, the farmers. Uh, yes, if, if, uh, uh, if, if the farmers can see the information in a tablet or a, or yes, a yes, mo mobile uh, phone. Yes, yes, mobile a mobile app is there. Uh, and uh, we have to uh, do some modifications for that. Uh, they can see in their mobiles. The mobile app is the Bolton IT, uh, IoT app is there. Oh. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the presentation and we thank our speaker. Thank you. Okay, uh, with this presentation, we wrap up, we wrap up this uh, session. I want to thank all the speakers for presenting uh, their works on time. We are finishing on time and that's very good. Uh, it was a pleasure to share this session and I want to thank the organizer for this invitation. Um, and it's very good to see Simba staff, uh, my, my, part of my alma mater. So, okay, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Hasta luego. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Gracias por la oportunidad. Un gusto verlos. Gracias. Hasta luego.